In this video, you will learn more about container networking and pod networking in the Kubernetes cluster, and you will learn how pods are able to get internet connectivity without actually having an internet router by IP address. And this should help you become better at troubleshooting any Kubernetes issues, or especially troubleshooting networking issues between your Kubernetes cluster on-premise or other third-party services. We're going to start with a very simple traditional network where we have a MySQL application and a web server running on host one. The Apache web server is listening on zero zero, so any traffic coming to host one hitting port 80 will be able to hit the web server directly. And then MySQL is only listening on the local host, so only the web server has access to that. The host one has internet access through a router that's outside of host one that does network address translation, more explicit source network address translation, such that host one can have internet access without needing a internet router by IP address on the host itself. Router one has two interfaces, one on the one with an internet router by IP address and one on the same private network as host one. And then router one will translate traffic coming from host one so that the source address gets translated to the 7.7.7 .7 address. And one example of doing that is the IP table rule that you can see at the bottom where we set a masquerade rule where any traffic coming from 192.168.0.0 will get masqueraded um, such that host one can get an access. And then on host one, how it's generally configured is you have a default route for that set default route via 192.168.0.1. And that means any traffic that's not the low, that's not that in that 192.168 network will get sent to router one. So any destinations that are on the internet, they will get sent to router one. Now that we have looked at a traditional network architecture of an application, let's take that same application and add some more complexity. We're going to add Docker to the mix. Now, when we have Docker involved, generally the way you would run it is you would have a database container, MySQL container, and the web server container. Um, both these containers have their own virtual network interface that will that by default would be, for example, 172.17.0.5. And then on the host, there will be a pair to that container network interface, which will show up as v, uh, virtual interface one or virtual interface two for the web server. Any traffic going into that pair will go out the other end and vice versa. And then these virtual network interfaces are plugged into a network bridge, Docker zero, so the containers on host one can all directly access each other. The default route is often, often configured to be uh, the network bridge. So the default route for the container would be uh, default via 172.17.0.1. Um, and as you can see, there's no, because of that, there's no direct path anymore from the host to the application. So if you want to expose the web server outside of host one, we will need to do something special. And in this case, the way that Docker does that is by using IP tables. So we co configure a destination network address translation route or DNAT and SNAT. So we can also, the traffic going back from the web server can also get back to the um, client that's outside of host one. Um, in the bottom, you can see the bottom two IP table rules is one is to configure uh, a masquerade rule for 172.17.0.6, um, destination port 80, jump masquerade as doing the snap. And then the same we see for incoming traffic to hit that container when any traffic on host one going to destination port 80, it will do a uh, DNAT. You see that jump DNAT to destination 172.17.0.6 dot zero dot six port 80. Um, so that's how we're able to expose the Apache container to the outside world. And then containers, they get internet access, like I said, through the uh, masquerade rule. And then similarly on um, containers that do not 
are not directly exposed to the internet, they can also still access the internet, and that's through this IP, IP table rule where it says anything under the 172.17.0.6 CIDR uh, jump to masquerade, which enables SNET for all containers on the host one. Um, so as you can see, there's now, before we only had one device doing source net address translation, which was router one, but now we are doing double snetting. First, we snet traffic from the container where this IP address becomes 192.168.0.10. And then when it gets to the router, it translates the 192.168.0.1 to a 7.7.7 .7 IP address, and then it gets to the internet. And then when it gets back, it it, 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 it keeps a connection tracking table, and it knows to which uh, IP to translate it back to. Um, so that's just Docker. Just Docker has this complexity. Now we're going to add Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes at a high level is almost the same as the single host Docker networking setup that we had. One key difference, though, is that, as we can see here, in Kubernetes, we have the pod concept, and the pod concept can actually have multiple containers in a single pod. And, and these multiple containers in that single pod, they share the same network namespace. So they have a single IP address, and they're attached to a single uh, network interface pair that attaches them to the host. And then this, this pod is connected to the Linux bridge that's on the host one, which is similar to the setup that we had with Docker. Um, the pods on the same host are accessible directly through this bridge. It doesn't need to leave the host traffic from pod one to pod two, will directly stay within the same host and can talk to each other. Um, it starts getting more com complex, however, with the IP table rules because there's new concepts like Kubernetes services that need to be implemented and those are implemented through IP table rules, which we'll, which we'll cover later. Let's take a look at how a pod is able to reach the internet. Let's take a look at, for example, pod one. Pod one by default has a route to 10.14.1.1, which is the network Linux bridge on host one. Then when that packet goes to this bridge, it, it goes into the IP tables and there will be a um, rule that says masquerade traffic um, that's not uh, masquerade traffic coming from this from this IP cider and then it translates the 10.14.1.5 address to a the source the source IP address of the packet gets translated to 192.1.6.0.10 and then when the destination is for example an external, an, an, an internet routable IP address, then it will look up what the host one, it will look, it will go to the default route and the default route for host one itself is going to be 192.168.0.1. So it goes to router one and on router one, um, it will have a similar SNET setup, source net address translation setup where it will translate the uh, 192.168.0.10 address to a internet router by IP address. For example, 7.7.7, .7 and then it goes to the website. The website sees source address to be that 7.7.7, .7, and then when it sends it back, it has a source. It has a source port mapping that it knows which IP to translate it back to. And um, as you can see, we have double snatting happening. We have first snap. The first level of uh, network address translation happening on host one, and then it is another l layer of SNAT on router one. Um, in some cases, that might not be the case. For example, if your GK node has a external IP address, then it will directly go from host one to the internet, and there would be one layer less of SNATing happening. Time for a quiz question: Which Kubernetes component configures SNAT? for pods on host one. It's the IP mask agent, which configures the IP table rules to send traffic outside of a cluster using the node IP address. Um, it runs on every Kubernetes node as a daemon set. And um, by default, local destinations will, will not get masqueraded. And then 
only the external internet routable destinations by default will get, will get masqueraded using the node IP address. So by default, the whole RFC 1918 address space will not get masqueraded. Um, you can see, for example, here on the, on the left side, we have a uh, the source is 10.1.1.1, destination is 10.1.3.1, so probably another pod on another node. That by default will not get masqueraded. But then on the right side, we see this red arrow where pod D is trying to send a packet to 35.188.24176, which is an internet router by PRS. That by default, um, if it tries to, it sends out, so yeah, when the pod sends out the packet, it, it uses the pod source IP address, but then when it gets, before it gets out of the node, it will get translated to one dot, uh, sorry, 10.128.1.2, which is the IP address of the node itself, as you can see here. Why is the default IP mask agent configuration often not good enough? Um, let's take a look by inspecting what the default configuration looks like on a GK cluster. Um, I suggest everyone to do the same thing yourself as well. So we run this IP tables, there's T net, there's L IP, there's mask. And then what you should see is an output similar to this. And as you can see, it includes all of the RFC 1918 address space, the 10, 10 slash eight, 172 and the probably what most, many people are more familiar with is 192, which you often see in your home router. Um, so this is often, this is often not good enough because many people connect their on-premise network, for example, to the GK cluster. And then when they try to reach an on-premise RFC 19 address range, it doesn't get masqueraded. But at the same time, people often don't advertise their whole pod IP range to on-prem. They often only advertise their node sire. So only the, the node IP addresses are often routable to the on-premise network. So in most cases, when people want to have a hybrid network set up between their GK clusters and be able to access the on-prem network over cloud VPN or interconnect, then often this default configuration is a cause for issues. Most of the time when people encounter network connectivity issues, most of the time when I, I, when I get someone come to me with it, I look at the IP mask agent, I review what is the on-premise network. And then most of the time we end up doing a tweak to the config map for IP mask agent, which we'll cover in the next slide. How to make the on-prem connectivity work from your GK cluster or your Kubernetes cluster in other environment. In a lot of cases, tweaking the non-masquerade CIDR setting to only include the node and pod IP address ranges instead of all of the RFC 1918 ranges will do the job. And there could be other issues that you have, other networking issues that you have. So this might not this might not solve your issues, but it's often a, a thing to check for. Um, one potential cause of issues between the on-prem and Kubernetes uh, network. So for example, if your pod site is 172.16.00 slash 12, and node, node site is 10.0.0 slash 24, then you should only add those two ciders to the non masquerade cider um, in your config map for the IP mask agent. So after modifying the IP mask agent config map and restarting the daemon set, this is what would the this is what would this is how the IP table rules would look like. Um, and as you can see, it only has the um, 10.0.0 and the other IP range that we added, which is the uh, pod cider, and this is the node cider. And then when traffic to your on-prem, let's say your on-prem is using 192.168.0.0 slash 16, then when the, destination, when the destination is the 192.168 cider, then it will get masqueraded because it's not in the early return path. As you can see, all traffic gets masqueraded unless it's one of these ranges. Um, it's often a cause for confusion, especially because it says non-masquerade cider. So a lot of people think if I put my cider in there, it will get masquerade. But you have to remember it, it says non-masquerade cider. I, I've actually made the mistake myself before as well. I hope that was useful and you learned something about Docker, container and Kubernetes networking. And please let me know if you have any other questions or topics that you would like me to cover. And I can do so in a follow-up video. Thanks for watching.